Mark. It's a real pleasure for me to discuss uh, with you today. Uh, to introduce Mark, uh, you are Director of Marketing and uh, Business Development at Fraser. Is right? Yes, that's right, yeah. Okay, perfect. Fraser, a worldwide uh, a broker company. Uh, now I will let you take the floor and uh, tell, tell, uh, tell about uh, yourself and explain uh, your background, please. My background? Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, I've, been in, uh, I've been in yachting for about 15, 20 years, um, uh, predominantly in uh, business development and uh, from a marketing perspective. Uh, I started off my career as a, a, a commercial lawyer uh, in London. That didn't last very long. I realized I didn't enjoy that so much. Um, and then uh, spent most of my career uh, in sales and in marketing. So uh, I've got probably about 30 years or more, which makes me sound very old, but uh, 30 years or more of uh, a, a career based in sales and marketing and the last 15, 20 years in yachting. Okay, thank you. Very interesting. Uh, now you can introduce our father and uh, speak about uh, all his uh, activities. So Fraser is uh, one of the longest standing full service brokerage houses in the world today, if not the longest standing. Uh, it was established back in 1947 by uh, a man by the name of David L. Fraser. Um, it's a worldwide opera operation. Um, it's got offices, its core offices are in, uh, in one in Monaco and uh, the other in uh, in uh, Fort Lauderdale in Florida. And we have um, 16, 17 offices elsewhere around the world in the key yachting hubs, I guess. Um, as a full service brokerage house, it, um, it offers uh, all services that you could require uh, as an owner. So we buy and sell boats for our clients. We build boats for clients. We can uh, refit yachts for clients. We provide charter management services charter retail services, crew services, uh, yacht management services, and everything in between. Okay, it's a very nice uh, company for Monaco. Um, the brokerage industry have been uh, very impacted by the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, so how, um, how has Fraser been able to evolve in order um, to continue his business? Um, I don't know, maybe uh, organize a virtual appointment or virtual visits? Yeah, so, um, I mean, obviously, we've all been talking a lot about the current situation with COVID. Um, I mean, one of the important things about, uh, I guess, the current situation is that almost all of us, maybe yourself as well, Baptiste, but almost all of us have been thinking, you know, uh, very often we have a habit of, in life of putting things off to the next day. You know, I can do that tomorrow. And one of the things that uh, I think COVID has made us all realize is that, uh, you know what, maybe it's not always a good idea to put things off to the next day if you can do it now. And what our industry, uh, not just Fraser, but what our industry noticed starting from around about July of last year was that many, many, many people um, across the world realize that, you know, life is pretty precious. Um, you really want to get as much out of your life as possible and putting things off to the next day is not always a good plan. So many people who have been considering, for example, uh, purchasing a, a, a boat or a yacht of any size, um, over the last three or four years, I think many of those people realized last year, you know what? We've been putting this off to another time. Well, that time has arrived now. We're here. We should buy our yacht. We should buy our boat. And it doesn't matter if that's a 10 meter rib or a 200 meter super yacht mega yacht. Uh, if that's what we wanted to do, now's the time to do it. So as you probably know about this, I mean, worldwide, our industry sold more yachts or bought more yachts on behalf of clients 
than at any other time since the industry started keeping records back in 2008, 2009. It was a record year, and not just in our sector, but uh, in, in the pleasure craft sector, which is boats below 24 meters, 79 feet, exactly the same scenario. Our parent company, Marine Max, I think had an all time record year last year, um, selling and buying uh, pleasure craft for their clients. So, you know, I think what's happened with COVID is that it really has focused people's thoughts about what really matters in their lives. Um, and that means things like being together with your family, your friends, and doing that in a safe and responsible way. And there's two ways in which most people around the world have adopted to this or adapted to this. One is they purchased uh, holiday homes, getaway holiday homes in, in uh, pleasurable, relaxing, but safe environments. So, uh, and the, the statistics for real estate in holiday homes, um, I think the last number I saw was that there was an increase of 27, 28% in that sector alone last year. So people have either bought holiday homes, if you like, um, or they've suddenly realized a boat or a yacht is perfect. In fact, it's better than a holiday home because you can actually move, you know, you can relocate. So I think that's an important thing. And yes, to your point, um, did we and our industry do things differently last year to accommodate the fact that most people at various times throughout the year weren't able to physically go and visit a boat? Yeah, we did. We, um, like all of us, we, uh, we adapted and, you know, we started to use Zoom calls like this. We started to use Facebook Live uh, and various other platforms to that enabled us to show a yacht to a potential buyer and their family and their friends. Um, very often with the, <clears throat> excuse me, with the captain doing the walkthrough and our broker in another location, but live on the call, explaining what it, what's great about the boat and the special features and the unique selling points. So, and we had two or three clients last year that actually purchased their yachts without physically seeing the boat, but thanks to those Zoom calls or those Facebook live calls. Very interesting. Thank you very much for this precision. Mark, do you think there will be a, a real changes in the future for, for your thing? Do you think the, the mind of owners and also for professionals will change after this, this crisis? Is really a big impact for, for all of us? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to think so, Gregory. And, um, and the truth is, <clears throat> I think the short answer is yes. Now, why do I mean yes? Well, yes, because you know, uh, looking at things from an environmental sustainability factor, uh, if there's one thing that I think that COVID did do last year was all of us remember those those uh, video images that we saw on TV where you remember where they had the, the drones or whatever filming the cities and there was no pollution. <clears throat> and I think all of us remember that. And I think that what that did was that really drove home the message that, you know, going forward, uh, we all have to play our part, no matter how small, but we have to play our part in, uh, in, in acting a bit more responsibly towards the environment, acting a bit more responsibly about how we use the things that we enjoy. And that includes very much so the yachts, our yachts, our boats. So yeah, I think that's going to change. Obviously, you have the IMO Tier 3 coming in, um, uh, not that far away, and a whole queue of regulations that are coming in over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years uh, within Europe that are all designed, obviously, to uh, reduce carbon footprints, improve energy consumption, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think whether we like it or not, um, the whole focus of greener initiatives, more sustainable yachting, is here whether we like it or not. End of story. And woe betide any owner or any potential owner if they try to ignore that. Um, they ignore that at their peril in the sense that uh, if, they, if they purchase a yacht or own a yacht that in some way is not optimized for sustainability or at least isn't functioning in some way 
in a more sustainable, sustainable way. Their resale price will drop uh, much the same way today as, you know, diesel cars. Give diesel cars another five, six, seven years, and you're not going to be able to sell those for life nor money. So I think that's a big change. And I think also uh, we've all realized, because we were forced to realize, uh, that uh, you can, you know, in a luxury environment, uh, which is all about the experience, so much more can be done using digital technology today uh, than many of our brokers perhaps would have thought. I think our marketing teams knew it was all possible, but I'm not sure our brokers really thought it was possible until COVID. And then they realized, wow, clients are quite happy to be on a Zoom call and visit this yacht. In fact, it's a very good experience because they can record it and then they can share it with their wife or their family or whatever who wasn't on the call. So those are two key things I think, Gregory, to answer your question that I think will change. Um, and I think how all of us in this industry operate ourselves as companies uh, will change because, you know, ultimately for anybody who's involved in yachting, whether you're an owner or a charterer, um, you want to enjoy yourself without any sense of guilt. Uh, you want to enjoy the experience and share that experience and talk about that experience uh, with everybody you care for. And if there's one little itty bitty aspect of that experience, which does need our attention today and has needed our attention for some time, it's the sustainability factor. Um, the good news is obviously that shipyards around the world and brokerage houses like ourselves have been taking steps in this direction for quite some time. But I think this has really been the, uh, this has been the, uh, the injection that a lot of us needed to uh, stop talking about it, stop potentially greenwashing, and let's make it happen. We are working for future generation, uh, Mark, and we are also working to bring new generation of future owners to, I think, uh, all these internet tools, all this new type of platform of communication presentation will also help the industry to, to bring maybe new young future owners that will be attracted by, by this world, but is for the moment still needs to find new clients. It's, it's quite it's also very important for, for you, for, for all, the, all the industry, for Monaco, the Principality of Monaco. So we are really working for both sides, environmental aspect, of course, and of course, business uh, factors. So very, very important. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with you. It's a, I think it's a really very good opportunity also industry. I mean, it, it, it's an opportunity, but it's also, it's something that has to be done. You know, there's no two ways about it. Um, and for those, you know, for those who may be watching this, who, uh, you know, there are still some people who believe this is all about tree hugging, tree hugging, you know, it's, uh, there are some people who don't necessarily follow the notion that climate change is a real thing. Um, but, you know, whether you do or not, um, too many people today, uh, too many people who want to charter uh, are asking companies like Fraser, um, when a charter broker puts a selection of boats together for them, one of the questions that's being asked uh, and has increasingly been asked over the last couple of years is, can you just make a little note on your selection as to which of these boats are in some way sustainable? Or can you tell us what sustainable actions are being taken by this boat? Um, and that's important for them um, because once they enjoy the, <clears throat> the experience on board the yacht, and then they come and talk about it with their friends and their family afterwards, it's always nice to be able to say, oh, um, we carbon offset our, our, uh, our fuel or our activity there. That, that's a worst case scenario, a worst best case scenario, if you like. Um, but it's also nice for them to say, oh, but also the crew, there was no single use plastics. Uh, the crew had a superb um, program in terms of energy consumption that we took part in. Um, we did some beach cleans. I mean, we had some clients uh, a few months back who, uh, the, uh, the crew said to them, do you want to take part in, a, in an ocean clean? And uh, the kids got really excited. It was like, what's this? What's this? And uh, off they went. And this was inspired by the chief stewardess. Off they went for a, an hour and a half, two hours, um, and cleaned up the waters around, around the, uh, the area where they were. And they loved it. 
And the chief, she was quite, quite amazing because she was able to explain how the, the plastics got there and, and what was happening and all of that sort of stuff. We have some owners, for example, who have programs on board where they um, track any time they see any pollution, for example, they photograph it, they send it back to a, a head office in, uh, in the States. And, uh, and that helps report where various pieces of pollution are so they can get cleaning operations to it. So, you know, there's lots of good stuff that you can integrate there that becomes part of the experience. But yeah, I mean, th that is the way we're going and it's the way we should go. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Uh, now, for speak uh, quickly about uh, the Principality of Monaco. Uh, what is your vision about uh, the Principality as uh, the world yachting capital? What is your opinion about this? And uh, for you, what is the important areas to focus on and keep this uh, leading position? Well, I mean, it must be said that, um, you know, uh, Monaco is the, the capital of yachting. Um, uh, it, it, it's just that in the sense that there's, I don't think there's ever been a time when I've uh, spoken to a client or a potential client who, um, you know, for whom Monaco, coming to Monaco, being in Monaco wasn't very, very near the top of their agenda when they came anywhere near this region. Um, not only for the first time, but uh, consistently when they come here. I mean, Monaco is an, offers an important experience for anybody who comes here. The facilities for uh, the yachts are unparalleled, obviously, and that's good. Um, and with the new developments down in, um, over in Italy, that's, uh, it's going to extend that experience uh, and that ability to, to do even more. So, I mean, Monaco has always been very important. I mean, it's, a, it's an area that every time we would do a survey of our clients about where they may want to charter or where they may want to be in their yacht, Monaco is always right up there. Um, and as I say, not just for the first time, but as a recurring thing, um, having access to the type and the quality of hotels and spa and well-being centers and restaurants and, and everything else that's here, including, of course, the casino, is all, is all excellent. I think uh, I think there's a lot of work to do, though, uh, in terms of the marketing communication message, because you know I still find there's a lot of a lot of our clients who love and adore the the, the principality, but um, who really only have sixty percent understanding of really what Monaco can offer today. They still have this sort of old-fashioned 1950s, 60s, 70s idea of what Monaco is. And of course, Monaco has been doing a huge amount of uh, uh, upgrading and, and, and uh, pioneering in a number of areas uh, over the last 20 or so years that um, a, lot of these, a, lot, a lot of these clients aren't, aren't really properly aware of yet. Um, so I think this, and this is good, you know, there's some really good work in terms of communication to do. I think the, um, the, the principality's natural adhesion and promotion of all things sustainable is important. And I think that's really, it's especially important given what we've just been talking about. Um, because there's a number of times when owners, captains and crew will frequently complain about the fact that they want to, be, to do things that are more sustainable, but when they get to a marina, half the facilities that they need aren't there um, for all sorts of services. So the fact that, uh, you know, Monaco does have, if not all, pretty much all of those services, I think is very important. And it's a very important point to communicate on. And I think also the fact, you know, there's the Yacht Club, uh, there's all the infrastructure you could ever need from concierge through to all the facilities we mentioned earlier, they're all here. Um, and they've all been here for a long time. So the principality genuinely knows how to support a client, an owner, a charterer, when they're here and when they arrive by yacht. So, you know, all of those things put together, I think really do make the Principality a, a leading light and deservedly, deservedly able to carry that, uh, that slogan, the capital of yawning. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Uh, 
maybe in better in better condition. I hope so, Mark. Yeah. I really hope so. Mm. You see, you uh, we, we, we will, we will. But you know what you're doing here is great. Uh, what the cluster does, I think, is is uh, is a, a, a important in our industry and elsewhere. And uh, you know, like I say, if listen, if you can sell a a yacht that's worth uh, 60, 70 million euros on a Zoom call. Think of all the other great stuff you can do in a Zoom call, huh? Really, totally, totally agree with you. And you are, you are one of the biggest company of, of yachting in Monaco, yeah. or maybe the, the biggest. So it's quite important for a principality to have such a company as Fraser uh, mm. inside its, its small territory, but big territory at the same time. So very, very <laughs> important. So thanks for, for you. That's no, all right, I mean, Gregory, you know the deal as well as anybody does. I mean, um, a small principality, two kilometers wide or whatever it is, but, um, you know, the principality has all the major players, bar, bar a few, but not many, uh, are all based here, all have offices here. In the case of Fraser, our head office, I mean, our head office for the world is here. In fact, we have two of them here, you know. Um, and the other major players in our industry uh, are colleagues, but also competitors, I guess. Um, also have their, 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 maybe not their headquarters, but they have major offices, a major presence in Monaco. But we're very proud to have our, our worldwide headquarters here. We're proud of the principality. We support the principality where we work well with the principality, the Yacht Club, you know, you guys, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, one of the advantages of having a, a smaller place like this is it's easier to get things done quicker than if you're in a bigger country. You're playing a big role in Principality, also on training for, for young talent. You're, you're recruiting uh, mm. a lot of people, a lot of young people. You're working with IUM, you're working with, with a cluster for training new people uh, that don't, don't really know or they're trying to know more about yachting. So it's quite important that you, what you're doing on this side too. So thank you. Thank you again, Marco, for your time and, and really for your, your speech. It's quite important to have your point on view on, on our small interview mm -hmm. formats and, uh, and as Batis said I, I really hope to see you soon uh, uh, within one of one of our future meetings inside the cluster again my pleasure you and uh, well done guys and keep the good work thank you Mark thank you bye all guys bye